What are you doing? Are you one of the millions of people that is suffering from addiction and you thumbing through YouTube trying to find the best addiction YouTube channel that can connect with you, that does not have a doctor perspective, but you hear the information for somebody who lived it just like you, somebody who went through it just like you? Well, this is the channel to come to because on this channel, we will dive into the deep and the complex world of addiction as I share my story from addiction to recovery. You see that button at the bottom, that little red button that says subscribe? Tap that button. See what happens. It won't cost you nothing. Are y'all ready to get into the show? Welcome back. Welcome back, you guys. This is the Sober Gang Experience podcast where I dive into the complex world of addiction and its path to recovery, right? I am a person in long-term recovery, and alcohol was my drug of choice. Yeah, when I say choice, it was my choice. There's one thing when we in our addiction, we got to understand that it is our choice. We put ourselves in that. Now, sometimes, a lot of times, it can become cause of trauma that we have went through or personal experiences. But simply, in my situation, it was my choice. It was my choice to drink. It was my choice to take myself through a long, continuous battle of suffering with my addiction. That was my choice. And if you're brand new to the channel right now, I will share with you guys. I do weekly uploads of my journey i would love to take y'all i would love for you guys to walk with me on my journey and my path to recovery this is my story this is my testimony and i would love for you guys right now to press that subscribe button it will not cost you a thing it won't cost you nothing try to see what happens but today i will be discussing with you guys my experiences with going to rehab my first experience was going with rehab. Uh, look, guys, it was it was a very, very, very um trying moment for me. I'm trying to find the, the right word so you guys can bear with me, right? Bear with me. It was a very, very emotional moment for me at that time. I was going through a lot. I was going through a lot of experiences with my life, in my life. I was going through battles. I was a person. When I looked myself in the mirror, I really didn't recognize the person that I was looking at. I really didn't, you guys. Um, it took me a long time to just understand that I had a problem. Even when my friends and family members would actually tell me, you know, you got a problem, right? I still didn't believe it. I still didn't believe it. When we, when we go through our problems and we go through our situations and our addiction, sometimes we got to land on our face, right? To get things right. It takes a long time for us to actually See where we at and, and, and what is going on with us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Yeah, I, I was on an emotional roller coaster, you guys. I'm I was when I looked myself in the mirror, I didn't recognize the person that I was looking at. We call those the times when we at our lowest. Those are those rock bottom times. Now, let's break down rock bottom. Rock bottom. When you hitting rock bottom, that's when you have per basically you at your lowest peak. You you at a point of no return. Addiction, substance abuse, alcohol, drugs have basically just beat you. 
Basically, it's won. It's winning. Rock bottom is when you just, it, it, you are at a point where you just can't find no way out. You're trapped. Addiction has controlled your entire being, your entire life. A lot of times, everybody in your life have probably left you. You all alone. You starting to look around and you just do not understand. Why is this happening to me, right? Everybody that you loved is gone or either running off. You done ran everybody off. You done lost jobs. You, lo you losing friends. Your children, your kids don't even look at you the same anymore. Rock bottom. You done lost your car. You done lost your house. You done lost your big promotion at your job. You losing money. Your house is in foreclosure. Your kid, your, your, your car is about to get a repo. You got the eviction notice. The light bill is due. But you don't have any money because you done used all the money up for your addiction. When you at rock bottom, that can be a lonely place. Rock bottom can be a lonely place. One thing about addiction, you guys, is that it wants you lonely. It wants you sick. And it wants to destroy you. It wants you to be dead. Addiction do not have any love for you at all. It wants to take all the joy that you have in your body and steal that joy away from you. But you have to, you have to want to get that joy back. And that's easier, easily said than done, right? Yeah, yeah, everybody be like, man, you know, you know, you can just stop doing what you're doing. I know it sounds easy. But us addicts, it's not as easy as it sounds. When we have been introduced to this drug or this alcohol and we have consumed it for so many years, we need it. Every day, we need it. It's our wake-up call. It's what we use to go to sleep. It's what we use when we mad and we stressed out. It what we need is just to communicate, to have a uh, to have a decent conversation with somebody. We need to be intoxicated. We need to be totally out of our minds, spaced out, out of reality. And a lot of us, it takes a lot of us, a lot of strength to overcome that. If some of us do not make it. Addiction is taking a lot of people's lives, right? I need you guys to follow me today, right? Oh, no, I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm just going to tell it how it is from an addict's point of view. So that's what I love to do on this channel. I'm a person just like you. I'm nobody different. I'm nobody special. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I go through the hard times. I go through the ups and downs. I go through the battles. I go through the thoughts of thinking about, can I sneak another beer? Can I sneak this? Can I sneak that? Will anybody find out? Because I'm in my sobriety right now. I'm two years clean. And one thing I do is I take my sobriety and my recovery very seriously. Most of the times when you're in your sobriety, it will be people that will come into your life just to see if you standing on business they want to know right they want to know if you standing on business is this person really playing this part or is he acting is he really sober is he really clean have he really cleaned up his image or is he just doing this for youtube and this little show he got well let me answer you i'm gonna answer that question i'm serious about this this is my passion this is what I love to do. 
I love to get on here and fellowship with you guys because I know it is somebody out there right now that is battling and is suffering from addiction. I love to use my platform to have great interviews with people from all around the world. I love to use my platform to inspire, to motivate, and encourage people that you can make it out of addiction. You can make it. It's possible. You have to put in the work. A lot of times, people in the in the, in our society, right? We love to get things handed to us. We don't got lazy. Let's just keep it real, right? We're gonna keep it real on the sober gang experience, right? That's that's what y'all here for, right? Y'all want somebody to be honest with y'all, and I'm honest. A lot of times we want handouts. We want things handed to us. We don't want to work for it, right? But in this addiction, on your way to your sobriety, on your way to your recovery, you have to put in the work. There's nothing that will be handed to you. This road to your recovery will be long. You will be battle tested. You will have to muster up all the energy because this sobriety, your recovery is a 24 hour job. Every day you wake up, every second that you breathe, you got to understand that your life is in jeopardy. And at any moment, your good blessings can be taken away from you. This is, addiction is robbing people of their livelihood. It probably had untook everything that you got right now. You probably at your last end. You probably at rock bottom. And you thinking that there's no way that I can get up out of this, man. There's no way. What do I need to do? I done lost everything. You probably thinking that your, you know, you know, your, your your family done left you. Your family done turned their back on you. The kids done turned their back on you. You done lost your job, your promotion. Your house is about to get took from you. Your kids do not want anything to do with you because every time they see you, you're either high or either you drunk. Today is the time to turn over that leaf, right? Today is the time. There's hope. Because I believe in you. There's hope. You have to want to do it. You have to want to do it. Stop beating yourself down. Because don't nobody feel sorry for you. Nobody. I'm going to give you some great words right now. And I'm going to keep it real with you guys. Don't nobody feel sorry for you. Nobody. You have to want to do it for yourself. Don't nobody feel sorry for you. There's nobody out there to go just, hey, be like, you know what? You know what? No, no, no. You cannot wait on nobody. You have to want to do it yourself. You have to get up. You have to get up off your ass. And you got to make it happen. You have to make it happen. If you want your family back, you want your kids to respect you. You want to live a life where you don't have to worry about addiction and everything that comes with it. You have to work for it. And I know that journey will be long, but it can happen. It can happen. And we starting today. And we are starting today. But my road to rehab is just like you guys. It's just like everybody road. I had hit rock bottom, right? I had hit rock bottom. I was in the place of no return. I was just like you guys. And I got on my knees one night. I got on my knees one night and I prayed. I prayed. I was crying. I, I was so emotional because at the time, you guys, I was alone, right? I was alone the woman that loved me and the woman that had my kids had left me the 
The kids was gone. I was all in the house alone. Still drinking. Still abusing drugs. And I was emotional, right? I was emotional. And while I'm abusing these drugs, while I'm drinking, I just started to cry. And I didn't know what for. I didn't know why I was crying. But tears just started to roll down my eyes. And I got on my knees and I prayed. I prayed. Because at that moment, I knew God was trying to tell me something. One thing I do know about this addiction and my journey, you guys, is that my journey is a spiritual journey. I got my ups and I have my downs, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a spiritual journey, none the least. And when I got on my knees, you guys, I prayed and I cried. Right? So I'm in the house and I'm all alone. The house is quiet. The house is quiet, you guys. I'm used to hearing the kids' laughter. I'm used to just hearing the TV on, the cartoons, or me asking my kids something. But at this moment, it's quietness. I'm all alone. I'm broken. I'm beaten. I'm defeated. I'm all alone. And that's what addiction wants from you guys. I said it at the beginning. Addiction wants you lonely. Addiction wants you sick. And it wants to destroy you. Period. Period. That's all it wants from you. After you get that little moment of your high, after you feeling that high, after that high is gone, it's back to reality. Life, bills, kids. You know? So, the next day, I called in to my job because I know one reason because I was still hung over from crying and drinking and, and abusing drugs all the night before. So I called in to my job. One thing we all do, right? We call in because either we still smell like alcohol or we still just look like crap. Let's be honest. We still look like we high and we still look like we drunk. So we do not want to go to work and just make ourselves look even worse than what everybody already expect. So I called in and I called. I got on my phone, right? And I called this rehab facility. Actually, I Googled it first. I Googled local rehabs in my community. Right? And one came up in particular and I called them and I told them about my story. I told them I was defeated. They asked me several questions and I told them exactly what was going on with me. And they told me that we need a little more information from you, your number, your social security, your name and date of birth. They need all this to process the paperwork, you guys, to see if I have insurance. And I told them at that time I actually did because I'm currently working. So they said they would give me a call back within the next two days. They called me back, right? So time went on and they finally called me back. But one thing about it, after I hung the phone up from them, I was asking myself, right, y'all? I was asking myself, if they call me back, will I go? And we all go through that, right? When we tell a lot of people we go into rehab, but when that time comes, we kind of bag out of it. We kind of make excuses. We kind of make reasons for not to go or why we shouldn't go. I was just about to do that. But when that phone call came, you guys, I was ready. I was ready. Because I was tired of being broke down. I was tired of, tired of being defeated. I was tired. I was tired, you guys. I was tired. I was done. 
And when you're tired of being sick and tired, you guys, you know. That's when you know. That's when you know. So they told me some great news. They had a bed ready for me. And it will be a 40-day intake. A 40-day intake. So I told my family. I told the woman that loved me. I told my kids that daddy would have to take a trip. Daddy would have to go. Daddy would have to leave you guys, right? I told them that. And they was ready. Everybody was ready for me to make this transition. And so on the day of me having to go to rehab, you guys, this story, this story just keeps getting better. I'm telling you guys, stick around. The story gets good. On the day of me having to go to rehab, I have my clothes packed. I have everything packed. I'm ready, right? I'm ready. I'm kind of feeling excited because this is a new journey for me. This is a new spiritual journey. I told you guys that my, my journey is spiritual. This is a new journey for me. So I'm, 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 I'm excited that I'm actually taking these steps to better myself. So I have my car at the house. But I was going to leave my car, you know, at the house in case the woman of my life needs to use the car. And of course, she has her own car, but I was just leaving my car there just for a bag. I didn't want to actually drive myself to the facility at all. So I'm all packed. I'm all packed and I'm all ready to go. And I got about 20 more minutes before I get to rehab, right? Before I have to be there. Boy, probably at least an hour. So I walk around to the convenience store nearest, nearest to my house. And I see a couple cars outside parked. And I approach the vehicle. And I ask them, I like, you know, look, I'm, I'm not wanting anything from you. I don't need any money. I'm just a person who, um, I'm, I got a 40-day intake. And I just need you to drop me off at this rehab facility. The first person in the car was like, uh, no, oh, I'm not going that way. I said, okay, thank you. So I seen the next car come up and I asked them, they asked the next car the same exact thing. And they also said the same thing. They're not going that way. So, you know, I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to drive my own self, right? Right? So I'm walking around, you guys. And when I tell you guys, when I say this is a spiritual journey, it is. So I'm walking back to my house, right? And I hear this truck pulling up. I don't know this man, but I can hear the truck. And I flagged this last car down and I told him, I said, look, I am a person who is trying to better himself. I got a 40 day intake and I have to be in rehab within an hour. My rehab is right probably two miles up this road I was wondering can you drop me off I have gas money the man in the vehicle looked at me and said I do not need your, your gas money he said but are you ready you have your clothes packed I said yes sir he said I will be around there to pick you up in five minutes he said you stay around the corner I said yes sir so I walk back to my house and I put my clothes outside the door I locked up the door and everything I'm ready to go to rehab and he pulls up and on our way to, to the rehab, we having small conversations in the car. And he looked at me and he asked me, he said, uh, do you know who I am? I said, no, sir. He said, I am a pastor. He was a preacher. And I couldn't make this up, you guys. See, when I say it's a spiritual journey, it's a spiritual journey. Right? The last car. Can you believe that? The last car that I stopped was a man of God, a preacher, that took me to my rehab, my first day of rehab. And when we got there, he did not just want to drop me off, right? He actually hopped out and helped me carry my bag. When I got into the facility, everybody there thought that was my dad. 
by the way he was showing me so much respect he was showing me so much concern and he was there for me until this day I have connected with him and I thank him graciously every time I see him and I actually went to his church and fellowship with him as well you guys there are always signs sometimes we overlook these signs to tell us when we need to stop but there are always signs right so I'm I'm, I'm in the facility and I got my paperwork together and so they take me to my room and that's when it hit me right I look at the bed I'm unpacking I haven't been 40 days away from my kids man and the people that I love in, in, in a long time I'm so used to being there whether I'm drunk or not high or not I'm, I'm there right I'm used to that but this journey right here I will go have to do this on my own I'm going to have to do this journey on my own and I'm going to have to man up and take responsibilities and take accountability right so I did just that and I went in with an open mind I was ready to learn. I was like a child again. You know, when a, a, a child soaking up so much information and every day is a new journey and they learning and they love brain cells and they brain just a clicking and clicking. That's how I was. I was soaking up all the information. I was taking rehab seriously, you guys. I wasn't in it to fake it to make it. I was in it to make it. That was, I was determined that when I got out of this rehab, I was a turning over a new leaf. This was gonna be a new me, a new person, rebirth, reborn. I was ready. So I soaked up everything, you guys, and I took it seriously. During my 40 day stay, I met some great people. And I also, and I'm gonna keep it real with you guys, I also met some people that, that, that wasn't there for good intentions they were just there because they were court appointed the court told them to go but if they didn't go they would go to jail now we all know them they was just basically in there faking it to make it right but i was in there i was in there to do it do it the right way i met a lot of great people that was in there to do it do it the right way as well and i still communicate with them to this day some of them have relapse and some of them do call me and we talk about it i'm their brother they are my sister we are family we are connected because we share that experience together and i do not hold that against them because this recovery this journey is tough it's not about you relapsing it's about you getting back up let me say that again. It's not about you relapsing. It's about you getting back up and trying it again, knowing that you relapsed, but you want to do better. That's what it's about, you guys. That's what it's about. And I did my 40 days, right? And I did my 40 days because at that time, you guys, I was tired of going through things i was tired you know like before i went to rehab you guys i was just i was tired of beating myself up you guys i was instead of beating myself up i was always denying that i was an alcoholic i was denying that i had a problem everybody was telling me i couldn't understand it right i i, I was lost i I knew I had a problem. I just didn't know how to face it. I, I was too ashamed to say I had the problem. I, I was tired of taking the woman that loved me through arguments. I was tired of taking her through this. I was tired of us arguing and all the arguments was about me, about my drinking, about what I was doing because one thing about it when we end this addiction the people 
it's the people that we love are the ones we hurt the most right so I was tired you guys I was defeated I was defeated and at that moment at that moment when I got on my knees and I cried I, I knew right then and there that it was time you guys you know it was time and after I did my 40 days you guys I got out a new leaf I was determined I was determined but I was bored right it's like this recovery when you when you're not doing any drugs again you got to find something I had to find something that replaced my happiness that I had whenever I was drinking and whenever I was using drugs so I started to do TikToks and I started to work out I love working out but I started to do TikTok and you got that's how I got my name Mr. Show Out because my son gave me that name because I was I always asked him to do these TikToks with me and he would be like dad you showing out I was like voila Mr. Show Out so I was uploading my TikTok videos right and I created a YouTube channel because I was looking on YouTube and I was seeing that people will upload their TikTok videos on their channel after two weeks of me doing it I realized that I have a story a light bulb a light switch flipped on in my head and was like you know what instead of me using this for my TikTok I finna use this to share my story my, re my redemption my sobriety my addiction and that's exactly what I did you guys I transformed this channel into my addiction channel into my testimony that's how this channel got started you guys and we are two years in and I'm loving the growth of this channel and I would love for you guys to continue to fellowship with me and continue to share with, to come and walk with me on my journey I need you guys we are family I'm nobody different I'm nobody special I'm just like you guys and each week I upload new videos new content each week I have a new guest speaker who comes on the, on my platform and we and we discuss addiction I interview them they share their stories of addiction in order to try to inspire and motivate people in addiction right Me going to rehab was the best part of my life, y'all. No joke. It was the best part of my life. I had finally understood what I was going through. I finally broke, it finally helped me understand everything that I was going through. You know, um, it was one of the best experiences ever. You know, so I'm on I'm on this journey. Like I said, you guys, it's a spiritual journey. It's a blissful, it's a happy, rejoiceful. Yeah, I'm two years, two and a half years clean, right? And it's had the best two years of my life. And I would love for you guys to understand this. You can do it too. It's possible. When you beaten and you broke down and there were addiction wants to have you at. It wants to keep you there. It do not want to let you out. You have to escape it. Um, you have to escape the matrix, you guys. Society wants to bind you in this corner and call you a crackhead. And call you a druggie, call you a meth head, and call you this and call you that, call you a drunk. But you have to escape this matrix that you are boxed in. You have to. That's the only way that you're going to be able to find yourself, find a peace of mind. You're going to have to do that, right? So, you guys, this is pretty much a, a spiritual journey that I'm telling you guys that when you when you when you want to do it you can do it 
I was scared at first, you guys, but now I can see that the light is is bright. When I go outside, I can, I can smell the air. I'm not drunk. I see, I'm seeing things a lot clearer now. My vision is not blurred by my addiction. I'm focused. And this channel is my vice. I love to come to this channel, you guys, and talk addiction and talk um, um, how we can beat it, how we can get out of it. Um, I love to share my story because I know it's you guys out there right now. It's somebody right now that have my same story. My platform, come to my platform, fellowship with me. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Let's cry together. Let's laugh together. Because I'm my, I'm an open book. I'm not afraid to tell you guys what I've been through. I'm not afraid to tell you guys that I was an alcoholic. Because I was. And because I was. And my sobriety and my recovery, this will last for me for the rest of my life. Every day I wake up, I got to understand that I was an alcoholic and that there will be temptations around the corner each and every day. I have to stay solid. I have to stay. I have to keep my head on the swivel. And I have to understand that my life is in danger every day. If I go back out there and I, I start using or I start to abuse um, alcohol again. You have to understand that. And with the drugs they have these days with this fentanyl and, and everything, we have to be a lot careful. People are dying rapidly from this fentanyl and people being pressed and they putting this in everything, right? So I'm telling you guys out there right now, my experiences with me going to rehab were one of the best experiences and scary experiences of my life. But I wouldn't take it back for nothing. I needed that journey. I needed that spiritual awakening. When I got on my knees and I cried, I needed that. I needed God to come in my life and touch me. I needed that. And he, he opened my eyes to me just being tormented and beaten down so long. I finally understood what those tears was for. Those tears were for rejoicing. Those tears that was coming down my cheeks were for me to feel bad about myself, right? Those tears was a way of God showing me that he is washing out all this toxic energy that I was putting into my body and he was re-cleansing re me and I finally understood that I finally understood that yeah thank you guys for joining me today I am Mr. Show Out TV and this is the Sober Gang Experience Podcast where we dive into the complex world of addiction you guys well, I share my testimony and I share my story. I am not giving y'all a college professor, a PhD medical doctor license, uh, mumbo jumbo. No, I'm giving it to y'all from an addict's perspective. Somebody who lived it, somebody who been in it, and somebody who is just like you. So I would love for you guys to continue to come fellowship with me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that little red button at the bottom. And you see that bell right beside it? That little bell? Tap on that bell. And make sure you hit that bell for all videos. Click it for all videos. So whenever I drop new content or whenever I go live on this platform, you guys will get a notification to your phone. And you guys can watch the video or you guys can jump in on my live discussions. And when I interview people, we are changing you guys. We helping people out each and every day. This channel is growing and I love it. I love the process. I love the growth. And I love each and every one of you guys that subscribe to this channel and continuously show me support 
and comment. I love you guys comment. When you guys comment on the videos, I love it. Because that let me know that you guys are really engaging with me. And I love to respond. I love to respond back. If you would love to find me on any of my social media accounts, it is Sober Gang Experience on TikTok. Sober Gang Experience on Instagram. And Sober Gang Experience on Facebook. Everything Sober Gang Experience. And when I say Sober Gang, I am not saying that to say that we are affiliated with any kind of organized gang. We are not affiliated with any kind of color, any kind of gang-like activities. When I say gang, I'm only referring to that we are a group of people that come together to make a lot of noise in this addiction community. And that's what we stand for. Thank you guys for tapping in with me today. I am Mr. Show Out TV. I hope you guys love my testimony and my experiences. My experience I went through with going to rehab. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe on your way out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, love, and happiness. Till next time. Yeah.